Okay, your grades are now available in Blackboard, and so I want to go over uh, the explanation. So you see your grade, and then now you'll compare it to this video. Uh, just a reminder: here's the rubric that you're going to be uh, that you were graded on, uh, and so if you got an A, that means you were on this right-hand column. If you got a B, uh, you were almost there. You were working out, but you didn't quite uh, phrase the the answers the way that you needed to to get an A. Uh, if you were in a C, uh, then you were really just trying to understand these concepts and apply them, and it could, you know, it's pretty clear uh, that you were trying to do it the best you could, and hopefully you'll you'll be progressing for the next few weeks. Uh, but you might want to go back and make sure you understand the underlying concepts, uh, and so that you don't get further behind. Uh, and if you had a D, you know, you might have not had enough time, or maybe you got behind in your assignments, and, and you're still trying to catch up. So overall, this is kind of how you reported you felt um, going into the exam. Uh, and so, um, you know, most people kind of were so-so. They felt somewhat prepared, but maybe you felt like you could be a little bit more prepared. Um, that's pretty natural and, and that's pretty consistent across semesters. So one major question uh, that, you know, we, I really wanted to see uh, this is kind of at this point in the semester, I'm start hoping that you're starting to see what's called the dual constitutionalism, uh, constitutional law as a set of rights, an idea of freedom, uh, liberty, these kind of buzzwords, checks and balances, all these things you might have learned uh, before this, but then also it's a system, right? It's a structure, it's uh, departments and human beings and things that are trying to uh, keep society in order. Uh, and so these two things are often in clashing with each other, or uh, we're describing it here as a tension. Um, if you were still struggling, right, you might still be thinking everybody just needs to get along and that's what law does, right? And so that would be a, a big mistake to think that that's realistic uh, and that's clearly not what law does. And then if you were somewhere in between, you're starting to see the complication of it and you're starting to see the, the benefits and costs. Uh, I just put four answers here that I thought um, are representative of the kind of answers that students put in. Uh, so several of you uh, were kind of saying similar things and so I want to just give these answers here uh, to help you see that um, it, it's a process, right? People are coming to these answers the same way, uh, but again what I'm really looking for is that you can show me uh, that there's a tension between individuals' rights and the state's desire for social control and controlling people's behavior. Uh, I also wanted to be able to see if you could move beyond procedural rules, right? If you were just to put in a Google search for law, you'll see uh, information about procedure, a set of rules, right? And so it's clearly not just that. Um, no offense to Google's algorithm, right? Uh, but law is much more complicated than that. All you have to do is read a legal case. Uh, and this is really what uh, you were able to do. You were able to look at a case, uh, and I've got four different cases here. Uh, so students came to this understanding from different cases uh, and contrast it, right? It would be lovely uh, if there was a universal idea of law, uh, then we wouldn't really need it, right? <laughs> As uh, the saying goes, if all men were angels, no government would be needed, right? So uh, we don't want to know what the ideal version of law is. We want to see how does law actually practice uh, itself out and how do people use it uh, in everyday settings. And so uh, here's where you were able to show me that it's more than just a set of procedural rules. And many of you actually pushed beyond that and said, uh, the reason why it's not just procedural rules is that the procedure isn't always followed uh, or that sometimes it's manipulated. And so you started to see that there um, are instances in which the ideals are not even really attempted to be kept uh, and that there's really much more practical or pragmatic issues that have more to do with social control. So good that you're starting to move away from just seeing laws rights or just as social control, you're trying to see the, the balance between the two. Uh, you're also showing me now here that your different experiences, and this was the kind of the buzzword that we we're looking for here, uh, is that if you showed that people have different experiences based on race, class, gender, uh, socioeconomic status, or all these different things that uh, manifest in an unequal society, that that's how uh, your viewpoint, your philosophy, your standpoint is going to be different uh, because of those experiences and you're going to have different expectations about what law is and what it can do for you as well as what the different obligations and duties that different people have. Uh, and so um, what hopefully you're able to show, a few of you are able to see this, is that um, 
there's this kind of myth that we tend to follow. It, largely, it's a popular culture and, and entertainment myth, but that somehow progress is linear, right? That it's chronological, that if you think over the last 300 years, quote unquote, things have gotten better. The, the reason why this is wrong is that no one is 300 years old, right? And so there's new generations born. Uh, you know, each generation is about 20 years, if you think about it that way. And so these challenges come back, right? So a new generation has to uh, fight for their rights all over again uh, because nobody lives forever, right? And so um, the myth of this progress over time uh, is largely kind of going back to the philosophical question uh, based on your, your viewpoint, right? So if you feel like things were really bad for people who look like you uh, 400 years ago, then you might believe things are better. Uh, but that's not because of time, and that's not because of society, that's because of each generation struggling to fight for a better reality for their children and grandchildren. Uh, and so you'll start to see why these systemic uh, injustices keep appearing each generation uh, is based in the Constitution. The Constitution is what creates these unequal social relations and, and protects uh, certain private property interests. Uh, and first and foremost, uh, the, the private property interest of slavery uh, and of believing that some people are inferior to other people. So this, this hasn't changed, right? And the structure of the system hasn't changed. Uh, so people are really just fighting within the structure. So if you really wanted to see progress, uh, if you want to think about it that way, which I don't recommend, but let's say you're persistent and you want to keep seeing it that way, uh, then you'd want to see a systemic progress, systemic change, a different system. Uh, a new constitution, that would mark an actual change. Uh, right now all you're seeing is kind of like, almost like a football game that never ends, uh, right? So it's constantly the third quarter and each team is just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? Because the game isn't changing, it's the same game. Uh, so you'll hopefully you'll start to see that, right? It's the structure, it's the system that creates these inequities. It's not uh, just people's opinions or, or their belief systems. So hopefully you'll be able to see that over time. A few of you are able to do it. Uh, but a lot of you are still kind of arguing about the myth, right? That quote unquote things were better. Um, that's a relative concept, right? It really depends on who you are uh, in any given moment, right? In any given place. Now, this one was confusing, I think, for some of you, um, but it could just be reading instructions, right? So I only pulled out examples, and there weren't there were only these examples where somebody where you actually did what you were supposed to do, right? Take five of the words and use them in a single statement, right? Not five separate statements. Um, I still gave some of you credit if you did five statements, uh, if they were coherent statements. Uh, some of you had statements that didn't really make any sense or you weren't using the words correctly. What I was testing here is to see, do you understand what these concepts mean? Not your ability to Google or your ability to read the definitions, but can you actually use them in a sentence? Are you getting to the point now after five weeks that you're starting to use legal vocabulary uh, correctly. This is really just a, like a mini test to get you thinking more because you're going to have to start using legal vocabulary quite a bit over the next few weeks. So this is kind of a way of practicing. Uh, and so here's some good examples um, of people trying to do this, right? And I think this is much better than, than the, the rest. But this was a struggle for many of you. Uh, unlike this one, right? This one, of course, was your personal opinion about something that you're learning. And I just want to show here that um, look how many different things there are, right? People are coming, uh, even though we're only focused on two pages of the book, uh, you're all kind of coming at this from different perspectives. This is, of course, because you have different experience, you have different standpoints, uh, and you have different interests. And so uh, here are ways that you're making sense of the material and you're, you're learning new things, right? So this is great, uh, and this is a, a great way of showing me how you're making sense of the, of the learning process. And then I wanted to just kind of also highlight your differences, right? Things that you are learning that was surprising to you. Uh, some of you had things in common. Um, others of you had things that were really particular to your own unique experience uh, and, you know, where, where you've been in the last 10 years kind of thing. Um, but I wanted to pull out some of these because uh, they, they highlight some of the main themes in the book, right? That even though there's the ideal of rights, uh, in practice it doesn't always happen. In the law, often uh, lawyers and judges and police officers often are the ones not granting rights, right? Taking away rights. Uh, so kind of challenge uh, some ideas you had before you came in. Um, 
also that you're seeing that certain groups, uh, excluded groups, consistently get uh, discriminated against. And so it's not, it's not a coincidence, it's not an accident, uh, it's not just because a few people uh, are racist or prejudiced, it's a systemic problem, right, that these groups have unequal power and so they're vulnerable, they're targets of the system. Another one I think was great is that you saw that uh, even though you might have thought that <clears throat> all judges do is read something and then apply it, right? Now you see that there's interpretation, they're going to come to different decisions uh, because not everything is unanimous. In fact, almost none of the Supreme Court justice uh, opinions are unanimous, and so it's, it's a rare situation when you get a unanimous vote in any, any uh, situation, whether it's business, uh, a religious organization, or the court system, right? And so now you know there's a lot of differentiation, there's lots of different opinions and diversity, uh, but that there's some restraints as well because of judicial precedent. Uh, another student talked about the civic education gap. So one of the main reasons that we teach the way we do or why you're encountering these things is because of this gap. Uh, some of us believe that you, know, you should be aware of what's going on in society so that you can uh, better participate in it. Uh, another one here was implicit bias and how much of a role it plays in our system, right? So that, that was new information for them. Uh, another one was about different philosophies, and you know that was just a, a representative example. There's probably a dozen more uh, legal philosophies, so if you're ever interested, you could look up philosophy of law, and you could find lots of different uh, perspectives on what people think the law is or should be and how it operates. Um, and then I was glad. So many of you really uh, did well on the, on the sovereignty uh, concept, and so it was interesting to, to read your answers and see kind of how you're struggling to make sense of these different political arguments we're having uh, in the country today because of this issue of sovereignty. Who is sovereign? Uh, is the president sovereign, like in Korematsu and in, in the Trump case, the Trump versus Hawaii case? Uh, is Congress sovereign uh, when they pass certain laws? Are they supposed to protect people's rights? Is the court unelected judges? Are they sovereign? Are you sovereign? Right? Is the is the state sovereign? Uh, is there some group of people, are all white men with property sovereign, right? How, how do we decide who's going to actually be uh, autonomous, right? Who's going to be ha carrying that individual liberty with them? I mean, it's good that you're struggling with this because we're all struggling with this. There is no correct answer. Uh, there's different schools of thought. Different people have different opinions based on their experiences and their standpoint and their philosophies. So I just wanted to remind you, this test, test was only worth 10 points, um, which is somewhat unusual for a midterm, right? I'm sorry, it was only a... Uh, so I think, you know, one of the... It's somewhat unusual because uh, people place a lot of value on, on the exam. Um, but in this case, right, I wanted to just check in and see how you're understanding uh, the materials. As you can see, uh, the discussion boards are actually um, very important to me. Uh, the final exam will be a way for you to really kind of show uh, what you're doing um, at the end of the course, right? How well have you understood all the concepts? Uh, and then these case analysis assignments coming up um, is a really good chance for me to see if you're able to apply the learning uh, that you've had so far. And then on here on the left hand side, this is just these are the scores uh, to help you see sometimes you want to know how you're doing. Uh, so at the top end, students that are doing the most work, they're getting the answers correct. Uh, they're in the 70s and 80s, right? Students who are kind of working it out, they're in the 50s and 60s, right? Uh, the average, the middle score uh, is 51, uh, and so that would be around the C, kind of starting to apply yourself, right? Uh, if you've fallen behind, right, uh, then I suggest uh, doing one of the extra, uh, extra credit assignments that I've already assigned, uh, or reaching out to me uh, and either proposing an extra credit paper of your own uh, or uh, I can help you come up to, with an extra credit paper, but you want to try to catch up and, and really put your energy into the next few weeks of assignments.